Oh yeah, get keen. Today, I would like to present to you the thing which has been monopolizing my life for the past two weeks. I've been coding my ass off for this with over 40 hours of coding to condense into one video for you guys. This project was inspired by this video here. And I don't make a habit of copying other people's content, but you can probably already tell my reasons. Don't get me wrong. I think this video is really cool, but man, do us all a favor. Have a few more fucking pixels happening, please. You're trying to show a thousand by thousand Rubik's cube in 480 pixels. It's not gonna work. I did the math. It's just not gonna happen. And I hate to be this guy, but this does look suspiciously like a random scramble played in reverse. Oh wait, never mind. He says it himself at the end of the video that it was algorithmic and nobody lies on the internet, right? I mean, sure, he doesn't say what algorithm he uses, nor does he link to any source code in the description. And he doesn't really look like any algorithm that I'm aware of. And his channel isn't even a coding or Rubik's Cube related channel. It's a fucking music channel, but that's just me being overly critical and skeptical. I'm sure it's an algorithm. Anyway, so that's what we're going to be attempting. I mean, I probably won't be solving cubes this big, but then again, neither did Applezerg. Sick burn. <laughs> Evan, shut up and start coding. Fine. Okay, first we gotta make the damn Rubik's Cube. Nothing flashy, just a bunch of colored cubes stacked on top of each other. You get the point, it's fucking Rubik's Cube. Hell yeah. Awesome. I also made the code able to generate a cube of any size. So let's see how far we can push this. We got 20, we got 30. Fuck it, let's go for the big hundo. Oh, that's awesome. Although my computer isn't loving it as much. Look at that frame rate. Mm -mm. I did try a thousand by thousand Rubik's Cube, but my computer had a stroke, so I'm not gonna try to do that again. Anyway, so we got some cubes. Let's get them moving. To explain how I did this, I'm gonna need to get technical. So a standard Rubik's Cube has three three by three tables or matrices representing the blocks. And this is all well and good while they're not moving, but unlike a physical Rubik's Cube, you can't just spin them. It's really not how it works. The matrix remains stationary. So we have to take each block out of the matrix and then put it in its new position in the matrix. So here's how I did that. First, I get the values of the matrix in a circle kind of shape to make a list. Then take the two values from the back and shang them to the front of the list. Then convert the list back into the matrix and boom, we got a turn. Okay, let's code that bitch. All right, too easy. Here we go. Yep, that's looking great and it's fucked. Fantastic. Okay, um, yeah, okay, that, let's, let's fix that. Yeah, yeah, let's fix that. All right, beautiful. There we have it. But we don't want the cube to rotate instantly. We want it to turn slowly so it looks actually like a Rubik's Cube. This is actually pretty simple. It's just a matter of actually rotating it. But yeah, here it is. Very nice. Okay, so we've got a Rubik's Cube going. Too easy. All right, so now that that's done, we've got the pretty daunting task of coding an AI to solve this bad boy. And if you think you were gonna get through this video without learning how to solve a Rubik's Cube, then you were probably right, because I ain't teaching you shit. Now, I will do my best to explain the basics of each step involved, but I can't go into too much detail about it. Otherwise, this video would be literally hours long, and we all know I can't be fucked doing that. Anyway, for any cube savvy people out there, I'm gonna choose the most basic method of solving a Rubik's Cube. I'm talking beginner level shit. I did this because I thought it would be the easiest, but Evan is a silly boy, because this method was probably the hardest one I could have picked for an AI. The more advanced methods of solving Rubik's Cube are considerably more difficult because they require you to analyze the cubes and apply memorized algorithms to solve the cube. For anyone who hasn't met a computer before, they're pretty great at analyzing, memorization, and algorithms, so I kind of shot myself in the foot with a cannon by choosing the method which uses the least of these things. If you're new here, welcome to Code Bullet. We do smart stuff in the stupidest way possible. Anyway, to the solve. Step one is getting the green cross. This step is generally considered the easiest when humans solve it because you don't really need any algorithms or anything. Anyone can pretty much pick up a Rubik's Cube, fiddle around with the cube and get this part. All they need to do is line up the green edges with their corresponding faces. But you can't just tell the AI to fiddle with it and then figure shit out from there. And I'm not gonna bore you with the details of how I do everything. So I'll just give you a peek into my mental state during this section. Anyway, so that happened, but it works now, so yay. So yeah, there are in total seven steps to solving the cube, so let's rapid fire through them. So now that step one is complete, we have the cross at the bottom. Next step is to chuck the corners into the bottom layer to complete the first face of the cube. Very nice. Okay, now the next step is to position the edge pieces so that the second layer is finished. Now there's only the blue layer to go on the top, and the trick here is to solve it without fucking up any of our previous work, which is much easier said than done. So next step is to make a blue cross on the top. 
there we go. Although our blue cross isn't fantastic as the edges don't align perfectly with the faces. But you know what can fix that? Some of those sweet ass algorithms. All right, so yeah, the next step is fixing that bad boy and oh, we're getting close now, boy. Next step, we need to get the corners in the correct spots, but not necessarily in the correct rotation. There we go. And finally, we do some more cheeky algorithms to rotate them until they're correctly oriented. And hell yeah, we did it. All right, let's, let's watch the whole thing through now. Oh yeah, that's pretty dope. But you know, a three by three cube doesn't make for a very clickbaity thumbnail. So we are just getting started because next step is to go even bigger. So how exactly does one solve a Rubik's cube that is bigger than a three by three? Basically first you need to convert the massive cubes into a three by three and then solve it as a three by three. On each face of a three by three, you have four edge pieces, four corners and a center. On say a seven by seven, you have kind of the same thing. However, the center piece is now 25 center pieces and each edge is now five edges. So first we need to solve the center piece like this and then solve the edge pieces like this then we essentially have a three by three cube with four edge groups four corners and a single center group okay i kind of get it but how exactly do you do that with great fucking difficulty my dear friend blood sweat and tears went into this believe me okay maybe not technically any blood but i did have one hell of a sweaty cry. You probably didn't need that visual, but you got it anyway. Moving on. Same as before, let's start with green. So the general tactic is to create faces one column at a time and then slot them in to get the full face done. So yeah, here you can see a green column slowly being formed and then once it's done, it's chucked in the bottom row. But Evan, how exactly do you make these profound pillars of green goodness? You watch a fucking tutorial. Moving on. So really the rest of the faces are pretty similar. You just have to try not to fuck up the shit you've already done, which is a general rule of thumb of doing Ruby's cubes. That is until you get the final two faces. Then you can use some of those damn sexy algorithms to get that job done. Damn, that's a good looking algorithm. Mm. It switches the positions of one orange face and one white face. So if you got an orange face where it shouldn't be one, just switch it, just switch it with that algorithm. Very nice. Okay, we got the faces done and now it's time for the edges. Again, there's not much to say about the edges. Same basic rules apply, just figure it out, apply the algorithms, don't fuck up stuff you've already done and you'll be golden. Beautiful. Okay, now we've got the edges and the faces solved. It's time to plug in the 3x3 algorithm. Hell yeah. Finally fucking done. Okay, so it turns out this is what's known as a cheeky parody. When you get this cheeky bugger, it basically means you're fucked, mate. No, it's actually pretty easy to fix once you know the algorithm. And it actually looks pretty dope on bigger cubes. Oh, that's a good looking algorithm. Okay, with that done, we have actually finished this beast of a project. And it's time to show you what you're all here for. The AI crushing some larger cubes. Let's go. First up is 11 by 11.
that was pretty awesome. Thanks for watching. I hope YouTube's compression algorithm didn't make it look like shit. Uh, but anyway, if you want me to do any bigger cubes, I might need to improve the efficiency a little bit because this took fucking ages. The 55 by 55 cube took about an hour and a half to do. Um, so yeah, if I do any bigger, it might actually become an issue time-wise. Um, but if you do want to see that, leave a comment. If not, then I'll see you next Saturday with another video. Probably.